there are different levels of capacity all over the world. Have you ever noticed that someone might be praying for a miracle and that miracle for you is pocket change? Someone wants an X amount of money to be given to them to do something that they consider so badly needed, so big, so insurmountable for them. And yet for you, it is lose change, it's pocket change. And so the world has different types of people all over the place with different types of capacities and different types of things and desires that they do want to see come to pass. And we've been discussing in the podcast the issue of visionaries getting misunderstood by people close to them and by their loved ones. And what is it that they suffer through? What is it that they go through? That's what we're discussing today. If, if you're a visionary and you identify yourself with these things, and how can you overcome some of these setbacks that are results of being misunderstood by friends and by loved ones? Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. is nothing as difficult as being misunderstood by people that you thought will come alongside to help you and be as excited and as enthused with the idea that you have or the vision that you have or the purpose pursuit that you are on like you have that kind of vision or that kind of purpose and that kind of enthusiasm and then you find that they are actually doing the opposite and we've been discussing in these episodes we've been telling you that you need to come to that level where you realize that nobody is obligated to basically believe in your vision. Nobody is obligated to believe in your purpose pursuit because for the most part, they see things that are in the conception stage. In fact, they do not see things that are in the conception stage. People want to see something tangible. They want to see something that has been delivered, sealed, signed and delivered before they, they can be before they can be able to believe. And unfortunately that's just the way human beings operate. And so we have visionaries who have this quagmire where they see things that are yet to come. They see the peer into the future and they see things that are needed, things that are massive, things that are grandiose. And there are possibilities to them. But the people that are around them, people that need to support them, love on them and care for them and so on and so forth, they do not see it the way the visionary sees it. And so they misunderstand these guys. And now there is another power that I've been talking about. And in fact, in my work in life, I think the greatest enemy, my nemesis in work is start a school. Because your friends and loved ones expect, there is expectation by the way, love creates expectations like you've never seen before. When you don't care about anybody else, there is no expectation on your part for them. But when you do care about someone, you expect them to walk in some certain way. You actually expect them to fit in some kind of starter school that is either general or that is one that you've prescribed in your own mind, in your own spirit. And so you expect them to walk circumspect to that starter school. And so loved ones will expect the visionaries in their lives to walk the way life has been designed to walk. I mean, you should 
go to school that is start a school and i'm not saying that's anything wrong with that you should after going to school you should excel in school there is nothing absolutely wrong with that and after that you should start looking for a job there is nothing wrong with that and after that you should you supposed to get married and start raising kids and so on and so forth and go through the same cycle that the start a school prescribed for the generations that have gone and now you are being forced to go through the same thing even though as a visionary you are seeing something totally different your purpose is screaming at you and telling you hey listen you are born to write listen you are born to speak you are born to inspire people what are you doing in the bank clucking around what are you doing in the streets trying to sell a product you are born to inspire people you are born to write why aren't you writing and start a school asks you the question okay fine that thing about writing let's talk about it for a minute where is the money in it and so your friends and your loved ones come to you and they ask you those questions where is the money i mean that's not the way things have always been done and so on and so forth and they misunderstand you in the previous episodes we've seen some of the ways in which they show their misunderstanding some of them will isolate you some of them will uh, remove their support from you either financial or moral or whatever it is or social some of them will laugh at you vilify you some of them will just do crazy stuff so that they can dissuade you and we say that for the most part they do this because Whenever you stand up against start a school you remind people who are subservient to start a school that they are also living quote unquote a lie that they could be better that there is something also inside of them that they are born of purpose that they are strong people that they are supposed to open their eyes and live their lives and represent here on earth because they came on a mission they were sent on a mission we are on a mission all of, all of us each and every one of us we are on a mission and so when you rise up and you are so passionate about your mission you remind people who are not on mission of their own mission and they do not want to be reminded why because it is uncomfortable they want to stay in the status quo and so they look at you and they call you names they say you are pompous and so on and so forth you think you're so much and so on and before long they start misunderstanding you and they start showing their misunderstanding seriously and you start feeling it and these are some of the ways you start feeling this misunderstanding number one we already saw that you start doubting yourself when a loved one someone so close to you misunderstands your vision misunderstands your purpose because they want you to step back into the starter school it sends doubts into your soul doubts into your spirit doubts on the project or the vision or the purpose that you had initially you start doubting and and you start asking am i really because you're expecting support you're expecting love you're expecting understanding and encouragement from the people who are closest to you when you don't get that what happens you doubt yourself you doubt the project and if you're not careful enough you can find yourself dumping the whole purpose all together moving on to something else that speaks into the starter school without ruffling any feathers that's the first thing you doubt yourself and then the second thing you feel alone and abandoned i mean there is absolutely nothing as sinister as being alone where people are see the biggest and i've t- said this very many times on this episodes on this podcast that the biggest punishment you can meet on someone is isolation they call it solitary confinement when people are in solitary confinement they have been given the worst kind of punishment and i'm told that if it lasts for a certain amount of time you can actually run absolutely mad where there is basically darkness and there is no one that you're interacting with you're just alone just alone can you imagine that and that's sometimes how visionaries normally feel when you have a vision and you cannot see yourself fitting into the status quo it can't work i remember very well some years back when i was supposed to go to university and i did some some reasons i didn't get my the cut off points and so on and so forth and my parents wanted me to do a course called i can't remember but it was in the kenya medical school 
uh, Kenya Medical Technical College, something like that, KMTC. Listen, I am not a medic. I don't love blood. I cannot stand the idea of someone oozing blood and suffering in a bed and medicine and words and all those things. I cannot stand it. And they did not understand me. I felt alone in the world. That was at a crossroads of my life at that moment in time at a young age I think of 20 or something of that nature at 19 I cannot remember but I, I've never been so abhorrent of an idea like that but it came because they misunderstood me and I felt alone at that moment in time thankfully we were able to resolve that issue later on and uh, we went ahead and that's why you're listening to Lawrence today because I was born to inspire, I was born to speak hope into the lives of people who are weary. Now, the third thing that I want us to discuss today that happens to a visionary whenever they are misunderstood, whenever they download this great vision and they're misunderstood is this. You get overwhelmed. You feel overwhelmed. See, when you are in doubt, you feel alone. You feel abandoned. And at times, you as a visionary, you get so overwhelmed to such an extent that something small that you could get help on, you feel like it is so insurmountable and so such an impossibility for you to see it through. And you're so in love with it, so in tune with it, so badly in need for it to work. But just the fact that you are not getting support, the fact that you've been misunderstood, you've been abandoned, you're feeling alone, you wrongly feel like the mission or the vision or the purpose is an impossibility. It's like it can never come to fruition. It can never see the light of the day because you are alone. See, the world has been made to operate in such a way that we need one another. I mean, every input you have, every kind of project you're going to have in this face of this earth, you're going to need help, whether directly or indirectly, whether big or small, whether technical or just mere social support, moral support, you are going to need help. And when all those things are not there, you feel you are up against climbing Mount Everest for the first time and you are ill-equipped and you are overwhelmed. And the overwhelm comes on you and it weighs on you. And the problem is that the vision you have is like a pregnancy. You cannot abort it. It's inside of you. I mean, you can't fathom the fact that you cannot bring this full term. You need help and it's not there. So you feel overwhelmed. And you feel you must complete this project. So lack of support brings this illusionary. That's the word I'm looking for all along. It is illusionary. The overwhelm you're feeling. It is not necessarily an impossibility. You might be thinking that, my goodness, this project of mine is going to take like two years to complete. Because you're not seeing any support. You're feeling alone. You're feeling abandoned. So the overwhelm makes you feel like the project is going to take long or sometimes makes you feel like this project will never kick off of the ground. I mean, I'll never make it and so on. And by the way, sometimes you feel like, should I just leave the whole thing all together? Why am I even hustling about this? The question is, what do you do when you feel the overwhelm? I'll advise you to do this. I'll advise you probably to step aside from the vision momentarily and keep your ears in check keep your ears sharp and attuned to anyone in the environment who is going to be passionate about that vision or that idea someone that you can be able to talk to someone probably who has even done the exact thing maybe totally different thing but they have gone through the same exact situation that you're going through where they were misunderstood and they went and they overcame. You can talk to such like guys because I have a feeling that guys like that will put their arm around your shoulders and they will encourage you and probably they will write some phone numbers for you to call and 
and maybe some emails for you to be able to send and they will make a connection for you. But the worst you can do when you're feeling overwhelmed is to totally, completely walk away from the vision, the purpose, the idea, and walk away from it and you go back to the starter school. When you go back to the starter school, you will not be comfortable. And by chance you stay there for decades, you will be one of the biggest people to regret. I remember working in a particular organization where I just knew that I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I was not born to do this. I mean, I'm better than this. But I stayed there for more than five years. And I felt every single morning out of place for five plus years. Every single morning I wake up, I curse that place. And for thinking that I am, no, you know, there's no, there are no options. I just go back there, you know, getting $50 a month. I mean, it's an embarrassing thing, but I kept going there and I was talented, I still am, gifted and I still am, smart and intelligent, I still am, but I thought that I don't have options, so I kept going back there, feeling like out of place every single moment. That's what's going to happen to you as a visionary if you give up your vision and you succumb to the status quo, you go back to the status quo and you start doing what the status quo has said you should do, you will always feel out of place. And there is nothing as bad and as corrosive as feeling out of place in life when doing something that you know is contributing towards your upkeep and so on and so forth. Probably you can do that for a season, but not for a lifetime. Anyway, we're going to continue discussing some of the things that the visionary goes through when they're going through a misunderstanding with the vision and the purpose pursuit that they are, or they, are, they are on in the episodes that are succeeding. Until then, stay on course and don't give up. Bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor, Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University, found at mastermindmentor.com, who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.